Okay, in this video I want to show you this tool that I built called SLAM. Uh, this is a tool that uh, allows you to deploy your Whiskey Python APIs to AWS using Lambda and the API Gateway. So for this demonstration I'm going to use this uh, little API example. Um, this is a Flask REST API uh, that uh, basically allows you to maintain a list of tasks. So it has the this standard get, post, put, and delete requests to work with tasks. Uh, I have a requirements file here for the uh, dependencies on this API, which are the usual stuff, Flask, uh, HTTP auth, and I'm also using DynamoDB as a database. So I have all those requirements in there. And this other requirements file is for the administration. So this is what I have installed on this virtual environment that I'm using for, for the demo. So this is this, this new tool, Slam, and a couple other things that will, uh, that will be used in, in this uh, demo. So I have this API ready, so the, um, the Slam tool will give me a Slam command. Uh, it has a, a few options, uh, but I, I'm going to show you most of them here. Uh, the, the very first thing that you do when you are starting with the project is to create a configuration. So for that, we use slam init. And the, uh, the only argument that's required here is the module and application instance of your server. Uh, pretty much the same thing that you use when you deploy with, uh, for example, with uh, GUnicorn. So for this example, I'm going to say uh, simple API, con, and then my Flask application instance, which is app. Uh, there are uh, many other arguments that you can pass here to uh, initialize things in different ways, but for now I'm going to go with the default. And all this is going to do is write the configuration, which I can then edit, and I will show you how to do that later. So after this is done, I end up with two new files, handler.py, which is used with Lambda. This is the, uh, the Lambda entry point and then slam.yaml, which has the configuration, which I'm going to show you later. Assuming that you have a credential file uh, for AWS installed on your machine, uh, we, we can go ahead and uh, start a deployment. For that, we do slam deploy. And this is going to do two things. First, it's going to build a Lambda package. This is a zip file that has the, the code uh, for, the, for this API plus all the requirements. And then in the second stage, it's going to run a CloudFormation template that will deploy the API. So after CloudFormation, it's now starting. After CloudFormation finishes, then the API will be deployed. So we'll wait for that finish. Okay, so the deployment is finished. Uh, I sped up the video here, but uh, it took approximately 90 seconds, give or take, uh, to do all this. So now I'm told here that I have a dev stage, and I haven't introduced the, the concept of stages, but uh, I, I, will, I will show you that later. Right now we have only a single version of the API, and that's that's in this dev stage. and. This is running the latest version of the Lambda, and this is the API gateway endpoint. This is the, the root endpoint uh, through which you access the API. So let's go take a quick look in the, uh, in the Amazon uh, in the AWS console. Uh, for example, if we go take a look at CloudFormation, here you see this, this is the, uh, the script that was uh, that was triggered by by the SLAM tool. Uh, if we go look at API Gateway, we have the API here, and uh, this, these are the, the resources that set up a proxy API. Basically, 
anything that you send that's uh, underneath the root endpoint will be sent to the Lambda and the Lambda will run it through, uh, through Flask in this case. Uh, you can see that there's a dev stage, so this is the dev version. And then uh, finally, Lambda also has the function deploy. And under Lambda, we see that there's a dev label that's uh, currently associated with the latest version of the Lambda. So this is uh, already deployed. I, I, I could start making calls. Unfortunately, this is going to fail because I haven't deployed the database. When I uh, initialized the, uh, the project, I didn't specify that I needed any databases. So I'm going to show you how we can add that by editing the configuration now. So we go into slam.yaml, and there are plenty of comments here where, where you can insert custom stuff for your project. So in this one, uh, we are going to add a table. Uh, it needs to be called uh, tasks. That's the name that the, uh, the Flask API expects. And then uh, I need to declare a, a single attribute called ID of type string. And the key for this table is going to be this, this one attribute. And the, the nice thing about Dynamo is that you don't have to declare every single attribute that you insert. It only, only needs to be uh, declared if it's going to be a key or part of an index. I'm going to save this. And now uh, the, the CloudFormation template will be updated from, from this configuration. If you want to see how that template looks, there's a slam template command. And this, this basically dumps the template as it's going to be used in the next deployment to the console. So here you see it, it, it's a pretty standard template. The, the first version, the one that we deployed, didn't have a Dynamo table because that wasn't the configuration. But uh, now if we look for it, here we, have, here we have a Dynamo table now added. So if I now say again slam deploy that's going to leave everything that's already there alone it's not going to touch what's been deployed but it's going to find that there's a new table and it's going to create that um, since i know that the lambda does not need to be updated i'm going to send also a no lambda option this is going to uh, skip the the, uh, the first stage where it creates a new package and it's going to go direct into into the deployment with the code that was already deployed. Okay, there we go. So this took about 45 seconds and we, we still have the same, the same URL and we're still running the latest version. Um, and when we go to the console, everything is the same with the exception that now we have the table. So now, now we have the table, the API is, is already deployed, so we, we can send some requests. So fingers crossed, let's try this. So I'm going to say uh, HTTP, so this is HTTP, a command line uh, API client. This, this API project takes uh, authentication it's actually pretty simple. The, the, uh, the credentials are hard-coded in the example. So I'm going to send Miguel as a username and Python as the password. And then I'm going to use the root URL from API Gateway. And the request is going to tasks. So let's send the request and see what happens. So um, th this is a GET request, which, uh, which is the default when you don't send anything in, in HTTP. And this is sending me a, uh, an empty list of tasks. If I wanted to add a task, I would send a POST request. And for example, I can say a title of buy groceries, say. And now uh, one task was added. 
and then if I wanted, uh, for example, the uh, this done field, I may want to change it to uh, to done, and for that I can send a put request setting done to true, and of course I'm using the wrong URL here. I need to add the ID of the task I'm modifying like that and there we are now, now we, we get done set to true so anyway this this API is uh, it's fully working <clears throat> but uh, imagine now uh, you're happy with this API I and, and you want to deploy it for production uh, but maybe at the same time you want to work on new features for a future version so clearly having a single version of the API uh, in many cases, it's not going to be enough, and this this is the, uh, the the problem that stages solve. So what we are going to do now is create a second stage. I'm going to call it prod for production. And uh, once again, I can do this at uh, uh, when, when I create the configuration at the beginning. But if I didn't do it or didn't think of it, then it's not a problem. It can be edited uh, manually in the YAML config file. And uh, here I have uh, stage environments, so that there's one entry for each stage, and, and then uh, inside there are uh, variables that are uh, accessible through the Lambda uh, when, uh, when the application runs in that stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a second stage here, prod, and you can add as many as you need, uh, and I'm going to follow the same format so that the uh, the lambda gets uh, gets the correct stage setting when it runs. So there we go. I'm going to save this. If if now I go uh, check the template, the template is going to show uh, additional resources for for this new prod stage. So to deploy that, once again I say slam deploy. Again, I'm going to say no Lambda because I haven't made changes to the uh, to the source code. I don't need a new Lambda version for this. So there we go. Okay, and now we have uh, two stages. Both are at this time uh, mapped to the latest Lambda version because I haven't told uh, otherwise. And uh, each has its own uh, URL. So now we have uh, two completely independent versions that we can manage. So now that we have this uh, deployed, uh, let me show you some of the changes that were made. Uh, in the Dynamo side, we have now two tables. So if you remember, I named the table tasks, but uh, when, when it gets deployed, the table takes a prefix, which is the stage name. This enables something like this where, where if you have two uh, completely independent stages you obviously want uh, two separate databases for them uh, and to work with that in the simple API project when I need to load my table name I I take the stage which is the variable that's accessible to the lambda dot tasks so that matches the names that the tool creates um, in addition to that, we have two stages in API Gateway. Now we have Dev and Prod. These can be managed independently. They can point to different Lambda versions. And finally, Lambda also has two labels now, uh, which, as I said before, they're still in, uh, uninitialized. They're pointing to the latest version. So. Now that we have a system in place, I can say slam deploy instead of deploying by default, which always goes to the dev stage. I'm going to indicate that I want to deploy to prod. And when I deploy to a stage that is not my uh, development stage, which is the dev, I need to say which version I want to deploy here. And in this case, since I already have a running version in dev that I like, I'm going to say uh, deploy dev. So this is going to do two things. First, it's going to 
make this uh, current, the, the, this latest version in the Lambda, if, if it's going to give it a version number. And then it's going to put that number on the prod stage. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so now uh, both dev and prod have a, uh, a numbered version. So let's say now uh, prod is now uh, set to version 1 and it's not going to change until I deploy to prod again. Uh, but uh, let's say I, uh, I, I go make some changes in the code and I, uh, I, I, I do a new deployment. So I say uh, slam deploy. Okay, so now dev is again in this unversioned uh, latest lambda, but prod uh, is uh, still set on the uh, version 1, and it, it, it'll stay there until I uh, do another deployment to the prod stage. The final thing that I uh, can show you is uh, after you've done, if, if, if you try this and now you want to uh, clean everything up, make sure you don't leave anything that my uh, uh, that might incur in charges uh, for you, then uh, basically there are two pieces of infrastructure that you need to take care of, uh, and they are the CloudFormation template, and uh, there's a bucket with the project name on S3. So those are the only two things, so you can go delete them by hand if you like, uh, or you can have uh, the tool do it for you by uh, running slam delete. And this is going to get rid of all the, uh, all the infrastructure. Okay, so that's uh, basically leaving my account empty. So if we go take a look, for example, CloudFormation, empty, Lambda's empty, API Gateway, also empty, and Dynamo is also empty. So I have my account back in its uh, squeaky clean state. So anyway, uh, I hope you decide to give Slam a try. And uh, if, if you do, please let me know what you think, if you have ideas for improvements, uh, if you have used any of the other tools that deploy to Lambda and API Gateway, uh, I, I would love to hear your opinion how Slam compares to them. And uh, uh, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you.